Roswell Flight Test Crew, back here in the field for the second day to take a look at how you can use drones to make money in agriculture. And we're back with our good friend, Dr. Gregory Kretzinger. How are you doing, Greg? I'm doing well. Happy to be here. Absolutely. And if you want to learn more about using drones in agriculture, be sure to check out the link to Greg's masterclass in the description below. Now today we're going to be taking a look at multispectral imaging and NDVI, which I find kind of mysterious, but I'm sure you're going to educate we're us. We're going to tell you all about it. All right, let's go learn. All right. So here we are back with Jason Tosh, who's the vineyard manager here at Stoller. How are you doing, Jason? I'm great. Good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you. So yesterday we went out and got some visible light imagery of that area that's been giving you some trouble. But I think today we ought to take it up to the next level and go do some multispectral imaging to give you that normative difference vegetal index. That's not a good idea to yeah, you? Yeah, that would be outstanding. I have the ability to take that imagery and overlay it over a visible shot that we have in some uh, management software we use. And that would allow me to go in and specifically address vine by vine uh, those weak areas with more water or more nutrition, that really becomes helpful in creating an overall higher wine quality. Excited. And obviously you're a vineyard professional, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what you make of this data. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get the imagery and plug it in. Let's go take it and, and do that. All right. This is the Parrot Disco Pro Ag. It's a modified version of their consumer disco platform. It will, will put some wings on it. On the top of the plane, you'll see the light sensor and this collects the amount of light information that's coming down from the sun. And then if we pop it out, you can see the autopilot, the full light sensor. And then on the bottom, we have the camera. This is the Sequoia camera, and that's a specialized plant camera and measures the amount of light that's bouncing off the plants. And then we take the two and we know the total amount of light and then the amount of light that is reflecting off the plants for our maps. What I'm gonna do just to be safe, I'm gonna copy this to my desktop, and that way I have the data. If we do another flight, then... Uh, and we lose the aircraft and the memory card. The, yeah, so it's 4.3 gigs of data, so a lot of data in just 20 minutes. Yeah. So you can imagine like how quickly that adds up. So we have a lot of multispectral data to look through today, and what I wanted to just show you was the raw imagery first. So every time this multispectral camera triggers you're getting four different narrow bands of light. So you get green, red, red edge, and near infrared. Mm. Primarily we're looking at red, which the plants are absorbing, and near infrared, which is reflecting. Right. But I wanted to show you, this is the raw data. We also have an RGB photo that's taken uh, that's a separate camera. So there's four different lenses and then an RGB camera. Okay. What we're really mostly interested in is in the narrow band data today right. to, to look at our indices. From there, this is about 1,600 photos or about four gigs. So every time it's triggering, you're getting five photos. That's a lot of data. We're gonna put that in a photogrammetric engine that will align the photos and then process those into a map and correct so everything's bird's eye wow. and the perspective is, is together. So we use PIX4D for that. These are the ortho uh, rectified data. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking at reflectance maps right now. What I wanted to do was just show you the different bands. So right now we're just looking at the green band. A reflectance map is just the light bouncing off the plant. And it's been calibrated with a light sensor. So we know the total amount of incoming light and the total amount that's reflecting back. And we correct then for radiometric reflectance. Okay. And that's similar when we think about radiometric thermal data. Is it hotter versus colder or is it 98 degrees? And radiometric means it's 98 degrees or 102 or the temperature is the temperature. In this case, the reflectance values are it's zero to 100% reflectance. It's a known value. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's, you know you've got an absolute value mm -hmm. versus yes. a relative value. So That's if we right. come back and do this in a week, we can compare apples we can to apples. Right. We can. Grapes to grapes. Yeah, in, the case, in this yeah. case. So let me uh, flip to red. And red is gonna be darker, Patrick, because the plants are absorbing a lot of red for photosynthesis. The chlorophyll takes up a lot of red, it activates the chlorophyll, and it produces then sugars that That's feed right. into the grapes. That's right. What I think is interesting is to look through the different bands before we start taking ratios mm -hmm. and to start looking at some of the variability starts oh, to pop out here. Very obvious. Um, 
And so when I am doing uh, mapping for plant data, I like to look at those, those each layers separately um, first, just to start to get a feel for it before we start doing anything too fancy. <laughs> Um, for me, it's just good practice to say, okay, where am I starting to see the variability? Uh, we know in the RGB we saw some in here, in here, over here, but we can flip through them all. So here's red edge, um, which is kind of on the, between red and near infrared there. Um, red edge sometimes is correlated with uh, early detection of stress. In, the, in certain varieties at certain times of year for right. certain problems, right. um, it can help with early detection. But for the most part, then we're, we're looking at um, near infrared. And this is going to be really bright relative to red because a lot of near infrared data uh, or light is bouncing off. And what I find here is wow. that you can really kind of start to see that variability yeah. then. Mm -hmm. um, Often I feel like near infrared shows me a lot more about the structure of the plants. You can see these trees in particular right. because those temperature difference, it's getting closer to thermal. Those temperature differences are more apparent. And so it really shows you differences in the structure of the veg vegetation, just the physical differences in the plants. So in this case, it seems like the weaker areas are the darker areas. That's right. So the healthier plants should reflect mm -hmm. more, more near infrared. Right. It's that spongy kind of mesophyll layer of the right. leaf if you want to get plant science-y about it. So now we have four maps, basically. I showed you four different maps. With each pixel value in the map, then we have a known reflectance value, like 60% or 90% reflectance or 15% when it comes to red or 10 because it's absorbing a lot of light, it's not reflecting a lot. Sure. From there, we can then do maps. We're aligned our maps on top of each other and we're gonna to start to take ratios of every pixel value and I'm gonna map out the difference then. I'll show you a difference map and that's NDVI, the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index. And that's just basically um, taking the difference and we can do that. Um, we can basically go in here and we could add in any kind of ratio that we want of our map. So there's a hundred different plant index out here, but we can say, okay, I want, you know, NDVI is just red minus near infrared divided by red plus near infrared. It's very simple math. Um, and that gives us those ratios. We're just taking pixel ratios, you know, subtracting one pixel from the next over the total amount of light that's there. And that gives you a value between negative one and one. It normalizes it, which mm -hmm. is the normalize. It just bounds it between uh, negative one and one. Pix4D automatically generates uh, NDVI for you. However, there's infinite number of indices and combinations. So they give you the capability here to take your different ratios. From there, the software is really a photogrammetric software. You then just can export those as geotiffs or data values for Excellent. more geo. What I've also done is I've drawn a region around this field, and that cuts out the bias of the trees. Because right, that color, we're trying to just really, it's just a colorization. And if you have this big productive tree in there skewing your colors, then it messes, it messes it up. So I always try and just define my field and cut out anything that would be an extreme okay. within the field. So I'll show my index map in here. Now what we're looking at is really just, it's our ratio, but now we're colorizing that difference to just really visualize where those differences are. Now here's a more art than science. We need to determine basically in here what we want our scale bar set at and how many color categories we want. And so there's a lot of, uh, of capabilities in here to just dial it into your particular crop. So for example, right now we're going from 0.3 NDBI to 0.83. You might want to go from like 0.25 to one, you know, and, 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 and maybe you want 10 categories or five, or maybe you just want two or so. Immediately we can start to see those, those differences even with um, the categories that I have already. Um, you can really, it pops out what those differences are that we saw in the individual bands by taking the difference between how much is being absorbed and how much is re being reflected, we then have a, a bigger difference than if there's um, uh, really productive areas or not so productive areas in here. Yeah. Well, Jason, let me ask you again, as the yeah. vineyard manager, as you look at this, is this useful information to you? Absolutely useful information. You cannot see this sort of data by boots on the ground. You, you have assumptions and you can see, oh, this section looks kind of weak, but how big is this section and how stressed out is this section? And to be able to fly this in minutes versus hiring an airplane and 
you know, having maybe some an error that you wouldn't get with a drone and the high tech cameras you're using, that's like cutting edge and things that we will be looking to use in the future in vineyards across Oregon, I would say. So uh, this being a vineyard and a winery, I understand you guys have got a tasting room here, right? <laughs> we do. All right. Well, maybe uh, let's go check that let's out. Let's go check I, it I out. I think we earned it. <laughs> <I> think, uh, <laughs> So that was our third look at how you can use drones to make money in agriculture. If you want to learn more, be sure to check out Dr. Gregory Krutzinger's Masterclass. There's a link available in the description below. I also want to thank our friends at Stoller Family Estates for having us out at this wonderful location. And I say, cheers. Yeah.